Hey, uh, this week in 1980s news, as mm-hmm. reported by uh, Screen Crush, did the Roadhouse reboot use AI? Mm. I think this is fascinating. You know I love legal stuff, and oh, AI yes. just pisses me off anyway, so... <laughs> Anyway, a new law- lawsuit claims that the creators of the upcoming Roadhouse remake took, quote, extreme measures to finish the film under a tight deadline, including using artificial intelligence. Uh, as mm-hmm. detailed in the Los Angeles Times, the suit was brought by R. Lance Hill, who is known by his pen name, David Lee Henry, mm-hmm. who was actually a co-writer of the original Roadhouse. Mm-hmm. He claims that when he attempted to regain the copyright to the original film uh, from MGM, uh, United Artists, which is now owned by Amazon. Mm-hmm. The company pushed ahead with their planned remake anyway. Um, the, there you go. Okay, period. Anyway. <laughs> uh, per the suit, the copyright for the Roadhouse script expired in November of 2023. And so, quote, Amazon went so far as to take extreme measures to try to meet this November 10th, 2023 deadline at considerable cost, including by resorting to the use of AI during last year's SAG Astra strike. Mm-hmm. Despicable, yeah. if Probably. it's true. Yeah, and among the most, I think, despicable things they did as far as using AI is using it to replicate the voices of the, at least according to the suit, of the actors in the film because they weren't mm-hmm. available, to, you know, for ADR for reshoots that sort of right. thing. So they, yeah. Yeah, at least this claim alleges. John, you're shaking your head. You, mm-hmm. you... Well, let me let me ask you this. So yeah. I read the article and I started mm-hmm. off furious. And the closer mm-hmm. I got to the end, the more I'm like, eh, <laughs> like I'm not sure how furious I am. Okay, uh, get there. it depends. There are a couple of camps of thought, I guess, even in my own head. One is replacing the actors with AI, reprehensible, not not a good deal across the board. And then the more I got further in the article, it's like, well, maybe it wasn't that it was for the film, but for the production of the film, right? So that mm-hmm. suggests like, oh, well, maybe they used it. Like, you ever see a movie that, uh, like a special feature on a DVD and you have the, just the rough sketches of an animation, they didn't use that scene kind of thing. Yeah. So and in my mind, yeah. I'm imagining like, oh, for pacing and for editing and for showing it in the, uh, seeing the progress and dailies, maybe they needed to show what it would be like with these things. Now, in that case, just have a, a grip read the line so you can do the pacing if that's the case mm-hmm. <laughs> duplicating the actual artist voice that's a little sketchy i guess and yeah. sounds like maybe they were gonna half use it and got their hand caught in the cookie jar because i can't find a good reason to just use a like a placeholder voice why do you yeah. got to have ai to make sure we're well, gonna make sure it sounds like him well do you really yeah it depends how they used it okay but yeah yeah i think yeah. any way they use it it's a little wrong it could be a lot wrong, but maybe it's a little wrong only. That's that's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I f- hmm. I wonder if <laughs> like I, there's some things I don't understand about this for sure, and I'm hoping that you mm. can you can guys can help explain it. Okay. What what would be how how would he have evidence for his suit? You know mm. the the original. Mm. Uh, like, what evidence? Yeah. Would he? have to show or bring to, to make this viable. Yeah, well, according to Los Angeles Times, there was an anonymous source that at least they quoted okay. that said that AI was, uh, they've suggested that AI was used to, to do this uh, during production. Mm-hmm. But that source also said, quote, if AI was used during production, it was only during early cuts of the film. Oh, uh, okay. Studio executives instructed the filmmakers to remove any AI, AI or non-union performers from the final cut, end quote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that hmm. might be it, but okay. I, maybe. I think, yeah. and I think maybe just take an issue or, or a different angle from what John is saying is, first of all, the thing that really pisses me off more than the AI is this copyright thing, this thing that they did yeah. uh, mm. to try to, yeah. to screw this guy out of his rights to his own, his original script. Yeah. But with regard to the AI, you know, John, even if it was temporary, like an animatic, that sort of thing, I guess to mm-hmm. continue your metaphor, it might be if you hired a, you know, a non-union guy to do the animatics, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're still doing an end run that helps you get closer to meeting that November 10th yeah. deadline. Yeah. It's like somebody's mm-hmm. got a scab that came in to do the animatic or something. And and really, I guess the more I think about it, I think there's no scenario where I'm not a little mad about it. But uh, mm-hmm. if it was so important that it sounded like that artist, yeah. well, then you needed the artist. In which yeah. case, now you did an end run around the artist, as you said. You know, It, yeah. it seems, unless somebody was just, you know, 
Hey, look, my son figured out how to <laughs> how to get Conor McGregor's voice on his computer. Oh, let's plug it in. It'll be funny. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's not that sense that, that innocent. There's no way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you had to have it, you needed it. In which case, you need the artist, and you yeah, you kind of see yeah. you scabbed them. You broke the line. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, with regard to the copyright uh, part of it, mm -hmm. uh, which again sort of upsets me more, is copyright law currently allows writers to reclaim mm -hmm. rights uh, to works that were written after 1975. Okay. 35 years after the rights were transferred to a studio. So if I write a script on my own, mm -hmm. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a work for, it's not a work for hire. So I'm not an employee of the company. Mm -hmm. I write a spec script. I go to different studios. Once one of them buys it, I transfer it to them in 35 years, I can get those rights back. I can reclaim them. Mm -hmm. And the writer of this again, uh, R. Lance Hill claims that that's exactly what he did. Um, mm. But he, they moved forward with making this film anyway. Mm -hmm. And you know, try to get it in it short of that that the deadline that would have allowed him to recapture his rights, even though he notified them years before. Plenty of time mm -hmm. for them not to make this film. <laughs> yeah, they kind of were procrastinating. It seems like <laughs> quick. <laughs> Let's get yeah. it. Yeah, and it reminds me, John. You, John, I'm sure you know. You alluded to the the Fantastic Four from the '80s a couple of episodes mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> was it Roger Corman or somebody that they had? Yes, like that? It was yeah. really awful. Yeah, but Fox for the longest time has owned you know the rights to the Fantastic Four and some other Marvel properties that Marvel sold them a long time ago before Marvel anticipated making their own films or having their own studio. Yeah, and part of them keeping the rights out of the hands of uh, reverting back to Marvel was they had to create a movie like every certain amount of years. So they'd make crappy movies and they would just shove them like Warner Brothers does now with good movies. Oh, right. They would just <laughs> right. put them on a shelf. Huh. Uh, so, and they would hurry up to beat these deadlines with whatever, you know, low budget, whatever minimum budget was necessary to get it done. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, but in, in recent years, a similar suits have, have been brought by other writers for, for uh, these copyright reasons, including the original writers of The Predator, uh, for mm -hmm. example, brought suit against yeah. Disney after they mm -hmm. acquired Fox, mm -hmm. uh, though that was uh, eventually settled out of court. Uh, Hill's lawsuit alleges the movie was com actually completed, though, in January of this year, two mm. months after the deadline. Hmm. So hmm. maybe they used AI to make something that they could say was complete before November 10th. Mm -hmm. But in reality, after November 10th, and they really, hey, Jake, you got to get in here. We just had AI do your lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. December, you know, or January. Huh. I've seen oh. here in the live chat, I see the Marcus is asking, hey, if the actors are okay with it, why is it an issue? Mm. Maybe the wrong people are upset about this. And yeah. the way I understand it, it's all about the strike. It doesn't even matter if the actors are okay with it. If they were, right. they were, in fact, breaking the strike. Right. But I, yeah. the article doesn't mm -hmm. say. It suggests that it was without anybody's knowledge. There's no mm -hmm. accusations of you know, Gyllenhaal or anybody breaking the strike. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, it seems like they weren't available, and therefore you used some reason you had to have their voice for something whatever mm -hmm. it is i think that's that's the issue is that you were you were breaking the strike for them against their will by simulating their presence hmm. right and even if actors are okay with you breaking the strike that that doesn't, doesn't matter. matter yeah doesn't make a difference right. yeah the, the union would have an issue with that so mm -hmm. exactly but i think the bigger issue uh again is the copyright is the fact that they utilize that maybe to dick this guy over out of his script yeah right, right to his script that he was entitled to right uh, the good thing for him is uh, this gentleman this writer hill is that he's got an attorney mark toberoff who who is uh, quite uh, skilled at this sort of thing he specializes mm. in intellect in intellectual property and has a long track record of of winning uh, summary judgments in similar copyright cases including uh, mm -hmm. he did one on behalf of uh, the friday the 13th creator victor miller mm -hmm. uh, we talked about his issues a couple of years ago yeah right and the family of a uh, superman uh co-creator jerry siegel helping them get uh half uh their uh, copyright interests for uh that year. sure mm -hmm. so landmark cases i mean big cases so hopefully that means something for this guy yeah anyway if this is true yeah it's it's really bad but um huh. we, yeah we don't know right now anyway of course mm -hmm. amazon gave a statement to the times claiming that hill suit is quote without merit the film mm -hmm. does not use any AI in place of actors' voices. We look forward to defending ourselves against these claims, end quote. Now, it doesn't say they never did. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, right. They may have. Right. Yeah. 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 Now, of course, this reminds me of uh, The Last Starfighter. You know, uh, oh. the, the screenwriter of that, Jonathan Betchel, a couple of years ago, was going through the same exact thing. In 2019, the rights were to revert back to him because yeah. it was 35 years, uh, you know, after The Last Starfighter. Probably, it was probably more by then. 35 mm -hmm. years since it came out in 2019, but he probably transferred the rights to them in 83, let's say. Anyway, 
Uh, so he had planned to make a sequel, but he ran into some issues getting his rights back. And so to date, there is nothing, you know, nothing mm-hmm. planned, even though it was moving yeah. forward at one point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom. Anyway. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make me uh, want to see the film any less. I'm still very excited about seeing it. I, I am too. I'm curious. Does that make me a bad person? Because I also <laughs> am not. I'm like, I'm upset, but not so upset that I'm going to deny myself seeing a cool movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would be terrible at boycotting things. 